So for the second pillar, organization and processes, uh, it's important to understand the change in the experience for the customers and how does it actually reflect uh, in the organizational change. So here I would just uh, like to point out what are the different uh, company profiles uh, which have a desire to build SaaS businesses or SaaS uh, solutions. So generally speaking, we have three categories. First of all, it is new, newly built SaaS companies from the beginning, for example, startups. Uh, but also we have transactional, traditional business uh, model software companies with license-based uh, model, which are going through the transformation. And we also have service integrators, which are looking into transition from the billable hours to selling an actual IP and not customizable solutions. So for the first group, uh, the migration might be actually the most challenging uh, because there is a financial impact involved when customers migrate uh, from the paying upfront uh, for the technology compared to the paying for the services, which is spread over time. So some typical challenges uh, which can be faced here, uh, some customers may not be ready to migrate to the new offer or the offer actually might not be ready uh, to be scaled, but also sales and services motions uh, might not be actually in the place. This is a very complex topic, but the very bare minimum, uh, what is a must do uh, actually in this situation? So first of all, understand and document the motivations uh, coming back to the first slide about the business objectives. And you need to define and clearly communicate the timelines for the transition and actually stick to it, but also per perform the segmentation strategy uh, for the migration. And the last thing, well, not the last, but uh, for the bare minimum, it is perform a risk management, basically the financial impact, the technical risks, and so on. A very popular question is basically how to identify the customers which are ready for the migration. And first of all, you will hear that customers are actually expressing the interest for the new offer. Also during the sales conversation, uh, you will hear the single signals that uh, customers actually prefer the consumption model, uh, but another occasion is actually uh, when customers ending their uh, current maintenance contracts. With regards uh, to the transitioning uh, from the project implementation to the IP, uh, the reason what we see in the market and what our partners see uh, that customers are actually transferring uh, the risk of their IT investment uh, to the product of, or the service and they want, and they want packaged uh, industry specific solutions which actually drive uh, business outcomes uh, and value. So coming back uh, to the original slide uh, with the motivations for the SaaS uh, model for the customers, uh, they do not want the investment in their own IT hardware and uh, operations. So to win in the cloud, uh, you should build uh, and bundle packageable offers. And starting with the portfolio analysis and identifying some uh, repeatable patterns, uh, there can actually be uh, a good starting point. And the good advice here might be to actually get an industry specialization. And when we talk about industry specialization, it does not actually mean that you need to invest uh, capital into building uh, a new product. You can just start by uh, simply uh, marketing towards that industry uh, using the appropriate language, uh, vocabulary, uh, and speaking to beer pains and sell them the same product as you already have now. And with time, you will actually uh, be able to figure out uh, the investment potential of building actually a new uh, product uh, in this uh, new vertical. The Liar model was introduced also in the technology as a service playbook, but I would believe that uh, currently it's a widely used term uh, in the industry. Uh, I think it also called a uh, flywheel. Basically, it consists of the four phases. First of all, uh, it is land, uh, and this is what every software provider uh, is very familiar with. Um, but then next, you need to ensure that the customers was actually able to successfully use it or, let's say, adopt it and gain the value of the product. 
And after that, you should be able to expand the offerings. And finally, of course, there is a new renewal phase with customer, where customers decide to continue with you. And this is actually a big difference compared to the transactional model where it did not really matter what happens after the software was sold. And in the SaaS model, the sales costs often are higher than the revenue from the billing period. And if customers do not recognize the value, they will not use the service. So adoption plays a very important part in this. Why adoption really matters? Uh, adoption reduces churn uh, and churn impacts revenue growth. So if customers did not adopt the product properly, they will not renew. So uh, the revenue growth will go down and uh, there will be also, of course, no chance uh, for expansion if the product is not adopted. And unfortunately, we do not see enough focus on this. And even if your competitive advantage is the vendor lockdown, without customers actually adopting and using technology, there is no room to expansion and upselling, if, uh, upselling it if they're not delighted. So what's important to remember is that uh, improving adoption actually improves the revenue growth. And predictable revenue growth improves the company financials and uh, evaluations. Adoption can also be, of course, achieved through the automation. It's, also, it's very important for uh, software companies with low-touch sales models where there is no human interaction. So what you need to do is basically to engineer out the complexity uh, within the product. And this will provide faster time to value, supportability and the ease of use. And we need to deliver frictionless experience for the customers. And with that, you should really utilize any available data which you have. Uh, if you don't have it, you need to set up the appropriate telemetry uh, to all uh, the product and to capture the usage. So you need to have the data at hand and you need to design uh, a product with the build uh, in functionality uh, for adoption in it. So what does it actually take to develop the SaaS offer? First of all, you need to define the clear value proposition. And please see our webinar about value proposition for the SaaS offers in order to understand how to do it. Then you need to create a packageable offer. Basically, you need to uh, decide what kind of features are included in which version and in which package. And then you need to price those. And again, we have additional webinar on both pricing and packaging in this course. But I would like to double tap uh, briefly into the technical uh, organizational capabilities. The first step would be to actually define the technology strategy and how exactly are you going to get uh, there after you decided what is the value proposition and what is the, actually the offer you are going to take to the market. And the technology strategy uh, can, include th can include things like cloud adoption, various integrations and so on. And I just would like to uh, point out uh, what's the difference bet between uh, technology strategy and the product strategy. Uh, with regards to the product strategy, uh, in product development, you cannot be certain that uh, idea will address a certain opportunity and will actually deliver the value uh, for the customer that you hope for. And therefore, uh, it's very uh, every improvement idea should be formulated as hypothesis or series of uh, hypotheses, and you need to validate those. Uh, this hypothesis uh, should be formulated in a way uh, that you learn something, for example, about customer needs, uh, preferences or behavior, even if it's invalidated. And for each hypothesis, then you need to decide what is the quickest or the best way to actually uh, validate it, either performing customer interviews, prototypes, building a feature or performing A-B testing uh, on it. And then for the technology strategy is actually, it is about how are you going to implement uh, those features uh, and hypothesis. For that, you need to, of course, uh, gather certain technical requirements. It can be performance, operational, security, I don't know, data protection, you name it. And you can do that through research or customer conversations. 
And last, uh, but absolutely not least, you need to build organizational technical capabilities. And this uh, will lead to the ability to deliver best in class products. So perhaps worth mentioning that uh, what we see often uh, is a lot of interest in the cloud with regards to this, but companies actually did not realize how it is different. And they try to come with the same old uh, mindset without realizing uh, the value of the cloud and its capabilities. So I really advise on learning uh, new cloud concepts uh, and the latest technologies available in the market. And remember that uh, actually automation and DevOps uh, will lead to more frictionless experience and hence drive better uh, adoption of the products. And as we remember, adoption directly impacts churn and the revenue growth. So effective go-to-market strategy is more than just a launch strategy. It enables you to do the following. First of all, establish commercial models to sustain company growth in parallel with the new customer acquisition. It also allows you to effectively build sales and marketing processes and set team and individual level responsibilities. The ability to measure effective product utilization is an important differentiator for the SaaS. A data-driven GTM plan can help you manage churn and identify expand and upselling opportunities. Therefore, the successful go-to-market plan should include, should include measurable product adoption expectations. And this data will inform you whether or not your GTM strategy was actually executed successfully or not. So, after you defined the clear value proposition for your SaaS offer, you can actually create uh, a persona buyer profile and persona buyer journey. It is also important to understand how is new way of selling the digital selling is different from the way we used to do things before. And also uh, to define successful go-to-market strategy, you need to create a model in order to work with partners. We have the whole webinar uh, with regards to the partnerships and how is it different uh, for the SaaS companies compared to the traditional software companies. So if we double tap into the persona buyer, uh, basically, what it means that there might be different uh, buyers of the solution. And in general, we can divide them in three different categories. First of all, leadership. Uh, they care about the question why. So why is it your solution which is going to make a difference? Uh, they care about the results and what is going to the impact uh, of it. Uh, things they really care about uh, and what's on top of their mind is basically how to make more money or save money but also how to avoid risk. The type of, the type of content uh, which works well uh, with this type of the buyer uh, is some testimonials from other uh, users uh, or companies, some short videos uh, or reports. Another type uh, of the buyers, uh, it's managers. Uh, they do care a lot about the processes and uh, business optimizations. Uh, they really want to know how uh, your solution is actually working and uh, how to use it. So what will uh, work and what will resonate uh, with this type of the persona buyer is case studies uh, or, for example, pro product videos. And then we also have end uh, users. Uh, they do care about the question, what? So what does it actually your solution provides? Uh, they would like to see perhaps some compatibilities uh, or concrete features of the solution. So the type of content which resonates uh, with them is uh, white papers, product comparisons, um, or perhaps, perhaps product specifications. So this is just a good example of our Dynamics partner of uh, how they have come up with uh, different personas and how they communicating it on their website. You can also assume that they are producing uh, content traveling for each of these personas, such as white papers and so on. And I just wanted to show you an example of how our Power Platform team is doing the messaging. This is a good example of uh, how to sell customer success and appeal uh, to customer pains.
so show the impact uh, that the product can do uh, and actual numbers based on the research. And I know that changing the wording might be actually pretty hard, uh, but what you need to realize uh, is that selling you're, you're now selling uh, software as a service. So not just software, uh, and the actual value now is actually hidden in how effectively your organization can deliver the service without the friction for the customer. So we need to go from uh, what we deliver to how it is actually better aligned uh, with the solving the problem for the customer and what is the return on the investment. Um, is it the change in the language or the wording or actually developing new functionality in the solution or developing additional service offering uh, to complement uh, the IP? So you need to move away uh, from the product features and descriptions and long list of what the product can do, and instead we want to talk about uh, the problems. So the process of defining the customer success could look actually something like this. So what happened is that the customer success definition has gone from the company delivering a tool, which really isn't a success, to more or less promising an improvement uh, of something by certain percent uh, by the user uh, of the service. So time flies and now we're reaching the end of this webinar and I would just like to make a small recap about the important points which I want you to remember after today. So first of all, yes, it is still important to deliver best in class products, but it's not the only one important thing. It is also important to remember that there are big opportunities in diversifying the revenue streams. Another thing to remember is that SaaS stands for the software as a service. Now you are delivering the service and not just the products. Remember how important is adoption. It directly impacts the churn, which means it directly impacts the revenue of the company. And remember to sell customer success. Now it's not just about the features, it's about what actually customer is gaining from using your services. That is it, and I really wish you a successful journey.